Welcome back on the River View, and today we're going to take a look at the rig called Daniel. This is from Pro Rigs, and Pro Rigs is a site where you can subscribe to a monthly character subscription package. Here, you can see this here. Lots of awesome rigs. You got the kits, got the groups. You got zoo, family, couples, robots, basics. There's more to come. It's really awesome. Great support. This is the latest version, and by latest version, I mean this is release 11. So for me, this is the <laughs> latest release. I don't know by the time this comes out, maybe there's a newer one, but that is the latest one for me. Head over to the site. Of course, there's going to be a link in the description where you can subscribe. You can see all the information there about the rigs, what is going on, who's training them. It's a great team, lots of support. This is now also supporting Maya 2018 to 2023. I am using Maya 22 at the moment. And as always, I'm going to put this on my animation BV site as well. And if you check that out, there are a bunch of rigs that I look at and go through and review. So if you have anything you want me to look at, send me an email and I will add that to my long list of rigs. But it's going to be on there. But make sure to check out Pro Rig for all the direct information of those rigs. Now, let's get to the rig. This is the full thing in its glory. As always, I'm going to start with the main controllers and then bottom to top. So main control on the outside here, you have main translate and rotate. And that's it. You cannot scale, nothing else. But if you select this one, as always, you can move that down. And if you have an extra controller, technically, then it creates a new pivot point. If you are now animating Superman flying around with a different pivot point. Some rigs have also like manual pivot point changes, but that's one way to talk about it. Now, if you do select this, you have a global scale control here. So it's not your scale as in your hotkeys here, but this is the one to go with. And of course, you can translate and rotate and all that good stuff. But on top of that, you have all these controllers here. Let's do this here. You can see them on and off. What you have here, you have gimbal controls, body polish. So you got your extra Benbo, stuff like that. Clothing extra, which is also cool. Let's go back to it here. You can see this here, belts and sleeves. So if you get to this here, you can move this around. It does move this, the sleeve back. There's no geometry underneath here that would reveal and the body underneath. But you have that, you have face polish on top of that. So if you go in here, you can see the difference, face polish, details on the lips and on the eyes. I'm actually gonna leave that on just for now. Actually, why not leave everything on here, right? Then you have geometry visibility. So if you don't wanna work like this, you can say, I wanna turn this off because I don't wanna just concentrate on the limbs. Why not? You can also just take these off. You have head and neck is this, and then legs is that. That's gonna all make it bit faster if you want but if you want to change that even more so you got this here the geo complexity so you can go to zero it's gonna be like this or you can go like that you can see this goes up to two it's gonna be a lot smoother you can see this here in the mesh how the mesh changes so i'm actually should i leave it as uh, one it's pretty fast like that it's definitely making a bit of a difference i don't know, my computer is getting old i'm gonna blend in my stats at the end uh, but for now just in terms of prettiness, I shall leave it at a one. And if you want to select the geometry, you can't. This is just the controllers. Why? Because in here, you can go into reference. You can have the template like this or normal, which means that you can now select this and go in there for uh, any type of texture changes or whatever you want to do to uh, modify that. I'm going to leave that at a reference. All right. That is that. Then you got this guy. So you select this here. And now you got skin shader. So this is set to original. You can also go custom and then you can change that into whatever values you have into the craziness, whatever it is here. So that goes, go back here for everything, right? Hair, skin, shirts, secondary shirt, pants, and so on. And if I go here, look at this. So many options, highlight shader, glow and accessory and accessory one, two, three, four, five, pupil shader and so on. There's a ton of ways to customize the rig. And on top of that, of course, you have your Benbo's, right? So if you do anything like this, unfortunately you can't scale because that would be next level to then take this and make, you know, the legs bigger, smaller, take the torso scale. That is not there. I would love to have that function to kind of reshape it as needed or even even like in polish phase if a specific shape here and you want to move this out and just kind of extend it and make it a bit bigger. Sometimes it's kind of neat to be able to scale that. I think that would be on my on my wish list here. Now, going to the feet, you got this controller here. So with this, you can translate. 
All right, you can move this around. When you rotate this, it's just a foot. So what you can do is you can take that pole vector and move that to align it. And if you select that pole vector here, you can see pin knee. So you can actually take this and then move that around like this. And you got world pelvis and foot switch. But if you don't like that, right, let's go back to your foot. There you go. So you have use pole vector, no. If you say no, now you can twist this with an attribute. I'm actually a big fan of that one for some reason. I don't kind of like having that in there, but it's totally up to you. Sometimes when you animate and then you have a pole vector that's, you know, somewhat hidden in there, or you, I know you some tumbling around, it sometimes gets a bit odd to select. So I'm glad that the foot has uh, this option here. Now looking at the rest, we have a foot roll. Classic, nice shoes. <laughs> So you can see here how, how the toes go down at the end, but then they go into tippy toes like that. You can go pretty far if you're gonna break this. Foot banking, left and right, which is awesome. I use this a lot for specifically like pushing and side steps. Like this is a bit underused, dare I say, by students. So if you're a student watching this, don't forget the foot banks. Heel pivot, so you got this from the side here. Toe pivot from here. Make sure that the pivot is back to zero so you can see this. So that's your toe pivot like this. You also have the toe spin or like the cigarette squashing thing. If you're old and remember cigarettes, don't smoke any money. Foot squash, which is also not always on rigs. I like that we have that. And then, of course, the uh, the follow world or uh, pelvis. Then we have an extra controller here. So here you can rotate these guys down. You can't translate and you can't scale. So that's just purely for rotation. And then we have this here back there. This is for A to switch. So you got IK, FK leg. So we're switching into this. So now we don't have the IK leg and it's a classic FK like this. Ta da No weight shift. <laughs> and then we have the upper leg stretch. So you got that option, which every rig has. It's always good for tweaking. You have volume compensation. So let's say I'm gonna go back to IK here and have this, right? That's my foot pose. For some reason, it's all stretched. You select that in the back and you go volume compensation you can see how well, if you stretch something, it should technically get skinnier. Well, that's what it does. That's your option there. And you have auto stretch on off. So I can't overextend my IK. But if you don't do that, or if you have that activated, you get those leg extension pops. So sometimes it's also okay to keep the stretchiness. Don't overdo it because then you will see the scale. But sometimes it helps softening the IK pop. You get a foot scale, change that. So my, you know, my hope to scale things like that. Sometimes you have the options in the foot separately. Sometimes I just like, I just like it on something like this. Like this doesn't have any options here, but like I said, you can scale the foot using this controller. Now going down to here, you have the pants. So you can go up pretty high actually. You got some socks down here, but that could be fun to adjust. Can we scale? We can, I like this. You can uh, create some elephant pants as we used to call them. Trumpet pants, elephant pants, wherever you're from, you probably have a different term for these kind of pants. We have that. And of course, you got your Benbos here. Ooh, there you go here and here. And then at the end, you got this controller here where you can translate that out to kind of move things around like that. Of course, given that this is a leg, this is going to be on both sides. Now, in order to minimize what's going on here, again, Benbos everywhere for here, including here. That's the deal but I'm gonna take these and actually turn them off. So body polish, gone. And also gimbal, you can see here, there's extra gimbal controls. I'm gonna turn these off as well, just to kind of simplify things a little bit. Going up, we got pelvis. Select it, there you go. That is how it moves. Sometimes with pelvis controls, it gives you kind of an odd pivot where it moves things and translates around. This is a nice pivot. So you have this, but you can also translate. So you can do your whole ding, 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 ding. Dancing animation that never gets old. If you ever watch Collins Bear, there is a, a demo reel called, uh, I believe it's Collins Bear. Uh, there's a tribute called Collins Giraffe. Collins Giraffe has an awesome dance. It looks like this. Anyway, <laughs> it's such an awesome demo reel. Thanks for nothing for any of those that, that know the reel. Here's your root. You can't scale, but you can translate and move this around. As you can see, we have arms at IK. Then we're going up to the chest. So here you got your rotation like this, no scale, also no translate. That's the option there. And then we go up to here. So now we have translate, which I love a lot. I like that you can do it like this. It's much simpler than like 50,000 chest controls and spine controls. I always like things that are just a bit more 
simplified. In here, you also have breathing. So you got kind of a chest move rotation, shoulder move for the breathing option here, and then volume compensation. So it's the same thing. If I stretch this guy, it should get skinnier. You got this here. That is that. Now, just to go back down here, since we have clothing controls, this is for your buckle. Move this out like that. Obviously, this one too. You got buttons that you can move. Go in here. You can't scale, but you know, if they pop off or something, you can have that animated. And if you go around it, these are the only controls. So there's nothing here in terms of belt control, which could be kind of neat. So if you have this here and you move that away, it'll be kind of neat to have, I mean, it's getting into the weeds, but imagine you could slide this control maybe off and then have that, you know, the rest of the um, the belt here, the, the tongue, whatever you want to call it, could flip out and kind of rotate. Could be kind of neat, kind of doing a bit of a putting pants on and off type of action. Someone comes back to work or not back to work, from work, comes home, wants to change, that could be kind of neat. Here is an extra control, right? So like that. And now what we have, you can see this here, here, you can move that around. This is your spine bend. You don't have translates, uh, rotates or scales, as you can see in the child control spoilers right there. But you got these controls for here and down to here. And looking around, that's what we have for that. Then we're getting into this here. You got your color controls, which is cool, which you can scale, but nothing really happens. So I don't know if that's like a remnant that needs to be hidden. But that would be kind of neat. As always, like I just love being able to scale everything and kind of change the shape of rigs. But you can see this goes all the way back. So if you need to move the collar around, this goes all the way back. And then up here, we have the shoulder. So you can see here is your rotate. You can also translate out. So if we have now you move FK style, your arm up. That's when you want to go up here and move the arm up. Not too far. You can see given the cloth here, it is a little a bit of a limit in terms of uh, deformation, which I would love to have a bit of a, a softer fallout here or fall off. Go back to this here. I'm going to leave it just quickly back into uh, IK just because here, select this. We have the pin elbow again, super important once you have this, you know, set on a table or something, which back in the day, <laughs> there was no pinning option. I'm like so old that I can say now back in the day, but that was a pain to stabilize your elbows or knees. Obviously, you have world chest and hand world space changes here. This here, like I said, this is for your sleeve. And then we have the IK hand, like this here. This is a sticky IK, meaning that your wrist is not gonna change orientation depending on where you move this around. You got the auto stretch on off. So as always, I'm gonna do this, no stretch. Do this, it's gonna stretch. And then the same thing as with the leg, you have a pull vector on off. So if I say off, I should probably go back into a bend here. You have the twist, if I can select this, what's going on here, there you go. You can select that option for that. Going back to here, you have the upper arm, lower arm options, volume conversation, just like with the leg. On top of that, you got your fingers. So here you got your overall translate, or rotates, I mean, to different axes. You have display, you got the curl, and you got the side like this or slide, which is really cool. That's to quickly block out something like this, like some tension or putting that on a, on a surface. So much faster than doing this, you know, one by one. You got your scrunch and then your thumb curl as well. And then you got arch, don't forget this, especially when you make a fist or more relaxed pose, that helps that as well. Cup, and then you got that overall, the pivot is higher here, two rotations. An overall relaxed pose for quick blockouts, which is great. And then hand scale, Hulk smash like that. Now, if you don't want to do this, and this is not detailed enough, obviously you can see this here. You can take that, you can translate this, you can rotate this. You can take all these controllers and do this all by hand, no pun intended, manually with the fingers. If you don't want to do like global controls. And sometimes it gets a bit messy. I am not in the camp of, let me just curl this into whatever pose. And then on top of that, change this. Unless it's like a quick added fix, why not? But then you got, you know, different controllers fighting each other. Not a super fan, so be careful when you do that. And that is, of course, on both sides. Going back into the hand, we can select this here. You can not translate, not scale, but you can rotate. You can move this around. There's also a align world chest option and the neck tense. And I thought this was going to be a, 
a shape, as I remember, for tensing the neck. But right now it doesn't do anything. I don't see any changes in the geometry either. So I'll check that later. Maybe I'll put it in the comment section and pin it. Unless this was a bug that something got introduced in this latest release, I will check. You also have the actual upper neck or the head rotation. So this is the lower part. Here you got the actual head, but don't forget to animate both if you animate. So you can actually translate this and move this around. You cannot scale, but you have squash and stretch here, and you have head size here as well to make it like a crazy bobble head and then go back. So if you go here, you got all these controls are on gimbal, Let's turn this all back on. You got geometry, visibility, everything. I can see extra stuff here, which is awesome, in the hair, right? And then you got your hair top, where you can move it like this. You can rotate as well. You can also scale. Ah, it doesn't do anything on the hair. That's a bummer. But you got that. You have this control here. This is your head gimbal. So extra controller on that, on this. Even if you go onto the chin, you can see here, you can move this down, you can rotate, you can translate, and you can also scale for a puffy thing as well. Then let's go to ears. So you got your overall ear shapes. You can translate, move this out, and also scale. So this is adjustable, which I like. You can sort of facial feature uh, changes. Now, looking at this here, you wonder, well, I w how do you open the eyes? Because if you select this, you only have these options here and then this here. That's when you don't forget, you got to put on NURBS surfaces as I was talking about for that squash and stretch that's separate, right? And you get the same thing here for the bottom part, a volume compensation effect nose, which I like a lot actually that you can change that, right? So if you move this, you can say, well, I don't want it or I want more. That's pretty cool. The thing that I would probably tweak, that might just be me, is that once you select this here, either this one, which does obviously a bunch of stuff here in terms of the eye socket, rotate, translate, squash, stretch, but I'm gonna open the eyes first. If you're, for some reason, maybe you don't want to do this, you don't want to have surfaces on, or you forgot whatever it is, I would love to have controllers that open the eyes just in case. I know it's kind of like, well, either you know or you don't, but it would be great to have these controllers here, and maybe this could be a controller here on this or this one or even here that says blink, and you can do a quick blink. Because I like the idea of a quick curl for blocking, but you want to go into detail with these controllers. And the same thing for the eyes. I would love on either one of these controllers, if you look at this here, all right, let me go back, now that the eyes open, you have this, and this is your socket translation, rotation like that. You have squash and stretch, you move this, skew is like that. You have a squint as well. You can see how much it moves here. So you have attributes effect brow, you also have eye scale, like this here. So it's cool to have all of this, but I wish there was like a quick function of blinking. But like I said, this is this here, controllers on off, and this goes into all of these here. You have a bunch of extra shapes, and this goes all the way to here. I do love that we have something here and not just on the cheeks for the puff, which is also a channel control to puff it like that. <laughs> if you got stung by me. But that extra little shape control here to get some extra movement, I think that's definitely great. Also here, eyebrows will be moved like that into all kinds of directions. And you can look at the channels. There's nothing else. There's basically just that here. But you have extra controls now for nostrils, which is interesting. Obviously, this is on both sides. You have this here in the middle where you can get punched in the face and have that. And this is... Uh, left face and you have right face cue, you have mid face and then face squash. So there are lots of options in there. And then as you open here, you got a chin option here. As you open the jaw, then you can see here uh, those controls, like how far they go. You can see like the corners are not affected because you don't want this to fight or you're doing with the uh, mouth controls, which is great. So mouth controls are back to regular nerves. So you have to look at what you have here. You can move it all the way like this. You have also, a pin, so you can pin this down. You've got the zipper, which is important for certain shapes here, on the zipper fall off, right? So if you do this here, you can decide how far we want to go and zip this. And of course, within all that, you got extra fine tuning controls where you can really shape all of this. Again, an outer control and the inner control for all of this. It's really detailed, it's very cool. And if I open that here, you can see this here, you can move your lips like this, but you can also translate if you want. You have child control for curl like that or thickness. There's a bunch of stuff. So lots of cool controls. 
And if I take the jaw, boom, that just a bit more here. You can see the tongue control. So this is obviously here. You can see that it reveals this. And then you can also see for the teeth. This is more on the soft side, but you can also grab this and move the whole set of teeth. You can see this here. And then if I go back here, that's your uh, first controller here for your tongue that moves everything around here. Then we got this one here. This is for your your mouth. So you take this and you got that whole shape here that you can scale if you want to. And it holds a, spe a specific you know shape of muscles and functions here. It's kind of neat. But you can move this around and that's for like a quick asymmetrical change of to the side. Which again, you have all those quick options which are awesome. And I would love that for the, uh, again, like the eye blink, like I said. There's a nose follow as well. It's mainly that, going to the nose here. This is not your nose ring, but you can move that down here. You can also scale if you want. Your nose tip as well. Pinocchio style, move it like this. I remember doing a demo for my, my little son's class, and I, I had, I think it was the Woody rig uh, that you can get for free online. And, and I went through all controllers and did like animation demos and showed some shots and you know, the kids were, I don't know, they were maybe nine at that time, maybe eight. Not impressed whatsoever. They didn't really care. And then the moment you select this and you go, well, you can also just shape the character. That set them off and they loved it. They love that you can do that. It's cracked me up. Anyway, you can move this here, the full nose, and you can have scale as well and translate. And then you can also have this here. So as you do your, your line of action of your jaw, you can technically go pretty far in re-sculpting and reshaping and removing whatever you want until it breaks of course that's just me adding all those controls look at that broken broken that is that obviously left right same side you got the ears that i talked about you got your hair control here like i said here this is your head gimbal and i believe that is that Talked about eyebrows here, right? You can move this. You can select this main curve and move the whole thing around. Uh, and obviously, like the shapes in here, but also shapes in here. You can really re sculpt this area. So, in terms of facial controls and facial detail, there's a lot of really cool stuff. And of course, main eye controller. And you can do this. And as you move out here, you can also move that eye separately. And then if you move the head around, that is going to follow. But if you don't want to do this, you can do what I want to follow the world. And then it stays put. So if you move the head around, your eyes will be here and focused. And if I go and undo all of this, that is kind of that. I don't think I left anything out. That is the rig in its glory. Now, it is pretty fast for me to move things around and manipulate. Uh, but this is an older machine. As you can see, my stats graphics card is getting old. Probably next year or so, I'm going to update the PC. But it's still good to move around and animate. And don't forget, again, you have resolution control. Not here, but here. Whee, there you go. Where you can change the complexity as well. But yeah, super appealing rig. I love the look of it. I love the hair. It's a fun look. I like the shoes. It's such a kind of old school -y, almost dad. And if you look back at the website, you can see here that in action with the kit. It's super cute, very appealing. The whole set of uh, rig selection, the, the kits and the animals, it's just such a great selection. So I highly recommend to check out Pro Rigs, all of them. And I have been told that they are going to update and add things like flying creatures. There's a bunch of stuff that's, uh, that's on the horizon. So I'm super excited for that. And that is that for the rig. Any concerns, feel free to comment, but I will know a lot less <laughs> than the people who created the rig. So feel free to uh, comment and email them. Uh, they're usually pretty fast in, in uh, returning, you know, any, any field of questions, any concerns, any bugs. And they do update their rig frequently. So this is not like, hey, we released this. We're going to abandon this and you're on your own. They do frequently update and listen to requests. And it's, it's a really great team. So that is that. As always, feel free to subscribe. This is like the YouTube pitch at the end. If you don't want to miss any of my uploads, I am back to uploading on a more regular basis. So that is that. Like and subscribe for the algorithm, as we all know. And that's it. So it feels like he got stung. Hold on, hold on. I can't stop the clip like this. <laughs> How about like that? Also, by the way, which I kind of skipped. No one is watching this anymore. But if I'm back here, you got pupil changes. I'm selecting these at the same time. Lids follow eyes. You got the iris like this here. 
this should have been shown at the very beginning. That's kind of creepy. And then all of this here in terms of changing the highlights and moving stuff. It's really great. Again, lots of details. This should have been shown before, but I am out. I am ending this. So feel free to watch more clips and watch out for upcoming Pro Rig reviews. Thanks for watching.